In this video, I'm going to show you how to import and configure a Nexus switch in GNS3. So what I'll do now is start up the devices and open up a console. As you can see here, the Nexus switch is booting up and so are the two iOS V routers. Now this is gonna take a while, so I'll pause the video. Essentially, you just need to wait for the Nexus switch to boot up. You can see that the image is being decompressed. If you see an error such as the following, just wait. And after a while, you'll get a login prompt. Default username is admin. Default password is admin. Notice we now logged in to a Nexus OS V switch. So show run as an example, shows us the configuration of the switch. You can see as an example that the ports are shut down. Notice the interface numbers, interface Ethernet 2.1 and Ethernet 2.2, which is different to the default names that GNS3 allocated, but we'll fix that in a moment. There's some other output, but what we'll do now is change the host name of the switch to Nexus as an example. Show CDP neighbor. At the moment, we don't see any neighbors. So let's configure router one and router two. So here's router one, host name R1, interface gigabit zero zero, no shut. I'll give this an IP address of 10111, 255.255.255.0. Show CDP neighbor. We may have to give it some time. So let's go on to router two. Host name is R2, interface gigabit zero slash zero, no shut, IP address 10.1.2.2. The Nexus is by default using the no switch port command. So the interfaces are routed interfaces. Notice no switch port. The interfaces are also shut down. So no wonder we're not seeing neighbor relationships. So I'll say interface ethernet. 2 slash 1, 2, 10, no shut. So show CDP neighbor here. We are seeing the Nexus switch as a neighbor, but notice the port is 2 slash 3. And on this side, show CDP neighbor. We are seeing a Nexus switch but the interface is ethernet two slash two. So these interface numbers need to be changed to two slash two and two slash three. Once again, on router one, show CDP neighbors shows us that, and the same is true on router two. So what we can do now is change the interface configuration Notice the difference to iOS. You can do show run as an example in config mode. We don't need to type do show run. The two interfaces that we are concerned with are two slash two and two slash three. So interface ethernet two slash two, IP address 10.1.254 slash 24. You can't do that in iOS as an example, two slash three. IP address 10.1.2.254 slash 24. So ping 10.1.1.1. Notice we can ping router one. We can ping hopefully router two. Yes, we can. So just to prove the point, debug IP ICMP, the Nexus switch, 
can ping router one, debug, IP, ICMP, wrong switch or wrong router. Let's try 2.2. .2. We can see the pings here and the pings here. So the Nexus can ping both router one and router two. Router one and router two, however, will not be able to ping each other because they need to run a routing protocol. They are in separate subnets. The Nexus, once again, is using no switch port to make the interfaces routed interfaces. So show run shows us that both of these interfaces are routed interfaces rather than switched interfaces. So I'll enable OSPF on both the iOS routers, and then we need to enable OSPF on the Nexus. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is enable a license. Notice what happens when we try and type router OSPF1, router question mark. We don't have the options that we're looking for. So we need to type a license grace period. So now when we type router OSPF1, it's still not working. So we need to type feature and there's a range of features. So feature OSPF to enable OSPF on the switch. And notice now when we type router OSPF, the command works. I could specify a router ID on this router as an example of quadruple two. And then I can go on to the ethernet interfaces. And just to remind you, it's on ethernet two, two and two, three that we need to enable OSPF. So interface E2 slash two IP router OSPF process one area zero interface two slash three IP router OSPF one area zero. We can see on this side, we've already got a full relationship. So show IP OSPF neighbor. There's our neighbor relationship. On this side, we've got a full relationship. So show IP OSPF neighbor. Relationship is established. Show IP OSPF neighbor. The Nexus has two neighbor relationships. Both the other routers are designated routers. Show IP route. We have a routing table. What I'll do on router two here is create a loopback of quadruple three. That should be advertised via OSPF. And there it is. So ping quadruple three. We can ping the loopback of router two. On router one, create a loopback of quadruple one. And we should have that route in the routing table. There you go, ping quadruple one, ping succeeds. So now on the iOS router, show IP route shows us the OSPF routes that have been learned. And we should be able to ping the loopback of router two, which we can. We can see in the output here that router two sent a echo reply back to router one. So on the Nexus switch, don't forget to enable your features. Notice we've enabled the OSPF feature. Don't forget to enable your licenses. Show feature shows us the features that are enabled or disabled on the router. As you can see here, EIGRP processes or instances are disabled. If we scroll down, we have one OSPF instance enabled. Other OSPF instances are enabled, but they're not running. We have OSPF process one running on the router. So don't forget to enable your grace license and then enable OSPF. OSPF is enabled on a per interface basis. you still type router OSPF1 and give the router a router ID as an example. So that was an example of how to import and configure a Nexus switch in GNS3 and set up neighbor relationships with Cisco iOS routers. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it was of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.